Hello, I'm Sanjay Jogia. I'm a wedding and portrait photographer and a Canon ambassador based in London. You may have seen some of my work, and if you have, I thank you for taking the time to look. You'll know that I get to photograph some beautifully lavish weddings all over the world in some dream locations. This of course helps in creating stunning images, but it's not always the case. Sometimes I find myself in very plain, simple, underwhelming rooms with limited space, light and impact, yet we must deliver the beautiful images that are expected of us. However, in the current circumstances, where there are no weddings, nor social events, it's important that we remain responsible and safe in our own homes. Whilst initially this seems restrictive, it is actually the perfect opportunity to push your creative limits by looking at your home differently. Begin by looking at where good light comes from into your rooms. Are there interesting patterns? Is there an unusual colour or direction to that light? Is it soft or harsh light? Can you close the curtains or blinds to control the shape or amount of light? Think about how you can use this light to pose your loved ones and create images that they'll cherish. Turn your chin toward the window a little bit more. Be nice to me. Bring your hands up onto your fur. Okay, just, that's it. Bring your, close the fur up a little bit. Okay, and then bring this hand, that's it, like that. One, one, three, two, one. How about outside in the garden? Is there an interesting surface, texture, or feature that you can use as a backdrop? Now, the location is usually what most people look for but get stuck when they can't think of anything. But the most important element should always be light. Is there nice light? If the answer is yes, then use it. If it's no, then look for it. If it just isn't there, then you can make it. It's worth knowing how light behaves though. Light is predictable. It bounces and it travels in straight lines. If you get closer to the light, its effect is brighter. If you move away, its effect is darker. However, it does behave slightly differently here. You might think that if you double your distance from the light, that light will give you half the effective power. Or if you half the distance, it will double the effective power, right? Not quite. I don't want to get too technical at this point, but it's important to understand how light behaves. Light follows an inverse square law. That means if you halve the distance, the effective power is the inverse of the square of the half, meaning that it's four times the power. If you place your subject twice as far away, then the effective power is not half, but it's a quarter. If you double that distance again, so that it's four times as far, then the effective power is one sixteenth of the original. This means that in order to create dramatic contrast in your images, the subject should be closer to the light. It's also worth knowing that as a subject moves closer to the light, the shadows become softer. Conversely, as the subject moves further away from the light, the shadows become harder. One final thought before you get going is that the larger the light source, the softer the light. So something like a torch will give harder light and shadows, whereas light from a larger floor lamp or a daylight through a net curtain will be very soft. People often think that a dull cloudy day is boring and suboptimal, but in fact, this light is more flattering, especially when using directional light from a window or a door. Okay, so in this shot, we're just using window light, which actually works to our favor. Um, in this situation, we want to use the soft window light that comes in. Cloudy days provide even more softness and even more diffusion of light. So we get very beautiful light, the kind of light that we would try to create in a studio. So this works really well for us. The closer you bring your camera to a reflective surface, the more of the reflection you actually pick up. So here you'll pick up a slight obscured reflection of, of uh, Roshni from the, the door that's just over here. There's a bit of the plastic and you'll see that in the photograph as well. Sunlight can produce stunning images and stunning effects and dramatic images if you look for pockets of light through trees, for example, or sunlight reflected from walls and shiny surfaces. But open sunlight will create harsh and unforgiving and unwanted shadows, not to mention making your subjects uncomfortable. Okay, just bring your face closer to the wall. There you go. One, one, three, two, one. Okay, 
Just gonna close that curtain behind us. I'm using the wall as a reflector. Okay, just wait for the light to come through the trees there. It's a little bit there. Okay, one, one, three, two, one. It's possible to simply use your household lamps to set the mood. Remembering what I've said about distance and the size of the light. Think about creating a silhouette from a window or shining a light through a door using a lamp. Need to move it backwards in order to get harder shadows. Okay, close the door. Okay, so turn sideways. Okay, come up to the door as close as you can, bring your face to the door as close as you can. Turn your face to the door. Just standing back and zooming in. And bring the hand toward you a bit more. Okay, turn your chin toward me a bit more. Okay, hold up there. You can even try taking your lamps outside and using a ladder to get the light high up enough to illuminate your subject. All this can be done with your household lights without needing special lighting and camera equipment. Okay, so now we're at the back of the garden again. We're back by the tree. I have Roshni just on a little stool, um, just our garden furniture, nothing more than that. Just a normal household ladder and a lamp from my bedroom. Being a wedding photographer, I'm very well equipped with lighting, but I want to demonstrate what you guys can do with just some standard stuff from around your house. Okay, we can create some really beautiful romantic photographs here. So let's see what we can do. I've got the light on the ladder above her eye line. In fact, the bulb itself is about where her eye line is, but that the actual lamp itself is diffusing the light. I've got it away from her so that I can balance a light that's hitting her with a light that's on the tree behind. But that lamp is giving me some texture on the tree, but it's also illuminating Roshi and I want her to be slightly brighter. Let's see how that looks over there. My camera settings are 3200 ISO because that's going to allow me to go to high enough shutter speed that I don't get any camera shake. And I'm set to f2.8. That's going to give me that lovely dreamy look and feel. As far as it goes, turn, turn, turn and eyes back to me. Gorgeous on one, three, two, one. Okay, I'm gonna come in closer for a tighter shot. On one, three, two, one. Turn your chin this way and eyes to me. The only thing you do need is to rise to the challenge. There are no right or wrong rules for creativity and fun. So let yourself loose and use this time in lockdown to unleash your creativity, discover your potential and empower your passion. Stay safe, stay positive and be creative.